it comes to databases and containers, I feel like there's uh, <laughs> there's always a strong debate, perhaps an argument of sorts, about if we should actually run databases in containers. Now, I have my own opinions on it, and I don't want to put those opinions on you. However, what I do want to say is it is possible. There are multiple different ways to do it, and we're going to dive into those right here in this video. Now, before we do, let's go ahead and talk about databases and containers for a second. Now, much like with storage, databases are databases, regardless of if you're running them in the cloud, uh, on bare metal, on VMs, in containers, a database is a database. There's a specific purpose for it. Whether it's a MySQL database, whether it's a NoSQL database, whatever the case may be, a database is a database. And the two primary ways that you would run database on containers is by having a container pointing to maybe like a MySQL container image or a Cassandra or whatever. And then you have a volume attached to it. Now we spoke about volumes a lot in the previous video, but that would essentially be the gist. And we're going to again, show how that's done here, but you would have a volume and the volume would be attached to the container regardless of, you know, wherever that volume is running. And that would be where your database data <laughs> is stored. Now the second way, and this is, I, I would say this is the way that I, I typically recommend just in, again, purely my opinion, you might think differently, or you might have a specific use case or something like that. But what I like to do is I like to connect an external database. So this way I can have, you know, my stack fully containerized, except the container host for MySQL, for example, it actually points to an external database. So for example, what I'm going to show in this video is I'm going to show how to take a Docker container running MySQL and point it to RDS and AWS. And it's okay if you don't have AWS, it's going to work the same way in Azure. It's going to work the same way on prem. It's going to work the same way in any other cloud or wherever your database is running, just as long as you have the proper username, password network set up for the ports. So, you know, in MySQL's case through 306 and the proper host with that, let's go ahead and dive into the hands-on pieces. And we're going to showcase how to get a container up and running. Let's jump right in. All right, now, first things first we're gonna do is we're gonna run the same command we've seen a bunch of times throughout the series. Docker run TID, we'll give it a name, MySQL. And then this is something new we haven't seen, environment variables. So environment variables, in the case of MySQL, for example, MySQL can have a bunch of different environment variables and there are a few that are expected. So for example, the MySQL root password, maybe the MySQL root username or a standard username and password whatever the case may be, you can pass in your environment variables with the E flag. So that's exactly what we'll do. We'll say MySQL root password, and then we'll just put in this password here. Of course, this, uh, this isn't the most secure way to do it because <laughs> we're passing in our password like this, but it is a demo environment just to get us an understanding of how to use databases with containers. And then I'm gonna specify MySQL latest so that container image. Oop, and as you can see, I already have one created. So if you do, which you might not, but just in case, docker rm my SQL force. All right, let's try that one more time. All right, there we go. So now what we can do is we can run docker exec it my SQL, and then we'll go in via bash. All right, so now we're here. And at this point, because it's a MySQL container, we don't really have to install the MySQL client or anything. So we could just run MySQL user root password. We'll type in our trusty super secure password, which was the one right up top on the terminal there. All right, and as we can see, we are in the database. All righty, so now let's go ahead and exit out of that. We'll exit out of the container and we'll go ahead and we'll remove that container. So that's the standard way. And you know what? I should have showed the volume before, but you're going to see it in a second. Don't worry. In the standard way, there's a volume already attached just by default because my SQL needs a volume, but that's like the default one. You're probably going to want a specific volume to use for your container that's hosting your database. So what we can do is we can run Docker volume, create test volume. All right, we got that here, docker volume ls. We can see test volume right here. And then we'll go ahead and we'll run this command. Same thing that we just ran, except this time we're specifying our v flag for our volume. And we're passing in our test volume here. All righty, so now what we can do is we can run docker 
container inspect MySQL. And if we go ahead and if we scroll up a little bit, we're gonna see two volumes as promised. So you're gonna see the local default volume that just again gets spun up by default from MySQL. And then you're gonna see our volume that we created right here. Now, of course, this is local. Again, like we talked about in the storage and volumes video, you're most likely gonna want that outside of your local environment. So for example, I'm running this on my Mac. Do I really want my production database volume on my Mac? No, probably not. This is just for testing purposes. <laughs> All right. So now let's go ahead and delete that again. And now what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to connect a container to an RDS database. Now, again, remember, if you're not running AWS, totally fine. The same rules will apply. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the browser. All right. And as you can see, I do have a database here. So I'm just going to click on it really quick. And it's called test database. And we can see our endpoint right here. Okay. And of course, it's my SQL. So I'm running over 3306. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this endpoint. I'm going to head back over to VS Code. I'm going to paste in this endpoint. And then we're going to talk about what we're doing here. All right. We're going to break it down a little bit. All right. So first things first, we're running our Docker run command again, specifying our SQL container name. Sorry about that. We're specifying our port. So 3306, because that's the MySQL default port. And now we have a few different environment variables here. We're going to specify the MySQL root user. We're going to specify the MySQL root password. We're going to specify the database. And then we're going to specify the host and of course our MySQL container image. Now, why am I specifying all these environment variables? Well, when I created my database, these are all the values that I created it with. Pretty straightforward. Just like any other database, when you're creating a database, when you're connecting to it, you're probably going to have your default root password, maybe, maybe your root user, then you're also going to have your standard users, etc. cetera. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run this. And here's what's gonna happen. It's gonna start to initialize the connection here, as we can see. And in a few moments, we're gonna see the full connection. Oop, actually, never mind. We can already see it. So we can see the MySQL init process is done. It's ready for startup. And then right here, we can see ready for connections. So we were able to successfully run our Docker container locally and connect to an external database.